Hello and welcome to another Common Core Algebra 1 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 2, Lesson Number 4, Justifying the Steps in Solving an Equation. Before we, get, before we begin, let me just remind you that you can find the worksheet that goes with this video, as well as a homework set by clicking on the video's description. Don't forget also, on the corner of every worksheet, we've got our handy dandy QR codes that will allow you to take a smartphone or a tablet, scan the code, and come right to the video. Alright, let's begin. One of the things that Common Core asks us to do is to be able to not just learn the procedures for solving equations, but to also justify why equation solving techniques work. It really all boils down to what are known as the properties of equality. Now, there are two main properties of equality, and they probably make a lot of sense. The first one is known as the additive property of equality. Additive property of equality. And what it says is pretty simple. If we've got two expressions that are equal to each other, if A is equal to B, then when we add the same thing to both sides, the equality still holds. Now, that should make a lot of sense, I would assume, right? If I know that 5 is equal to 5, then if I add, let's say, 3 to both sides, right, I get 8 is equal to 8. Sure. In other words, if this step is true, right, if that's a true equation, we've talked about true equations before, then when I add something to both sides, it remains true. Please note, of course, if the original inequality is false, you know, if I say that 3 is equal to 7, and then I add 5 to both sides, then it remains false. Right? Eh, false, and continues to be false. So everything that we do today is going to be based on the idea that we're starting with an equation that's true. Let's look at the multiplicative property of equality. It says basically the same thing. If I know that two expressions are equal, then I can multiply both sides of the equation by any constant I want, by any real number I want, and it will maintain that true equality. Let's again start off with our true equality 5 is equal to 5, right? If I suddenly come along and I multiply both sides of this equation by 2, let's say, right, then I get the very true equality 10 is equal to 10, right? So if that equality is true, then multiplying both sides of the equation is true. What happens a lot of times is that teachers summarize both of these rules as basically one thing, which is do what you want to either side of inequality as long as you do the same thing. Now, that's a nice shortcut to understanding, but we really want to know these two properties because these two properties allow us to do manipulations on both sides of the equation. It's a little bit different than when we actually work with equivalent expressions on both sides. There we're using things like the commutative property, the associative property, and the distributive property. All right, let me clear out this text, and then let's jump right into justifying some equations. Or not justifying the equations, but justifying the equation-solving techniques. Okay, exercise number one. Consider the equation 2x plus 9 equals 21. The steps in solving the equation are shown below, justify each step. So the first step that we would really do in doing this equation, now we would probably typically show it kind of like this, is subtracting 9 from both sides. All right, that's actually the additive property of equality. Now you might object and say, wait a second, we're not adding there, we're subtracting. But we can get away with that, right? Because calling it the additive property of equality, because really, we can think of this as simply doing 2x and then adding a negative 9 to both sides, right? Adding a negative 9 is the same as subtracting 9. So we get our typical 2x is equal to 12. All right. Now, in step 2, we multiply both sides by 1 half, and we get our final true statement, x is equal to 6. And that is then the multiplicative property of equality. All right. Just like we can subtract from both sides, by the way, we could have easily divided both sides by 2, and we would still call it the multiplicative property of equality. And I know that's a little bit confusing. 
right? But dividing both sides of an equation by some constant or even by some variable is the equivalent of multiplying by its reciprocal, right? So dividing by two is the same as multiplying by one half. All right? Those two properties, basically, those two properties form the basis of all linear equation solving techniques. Everything else, you know, manipulating the two sides to get equivalent expressions, again, that rests on things like commutative, associative, distributive properties. But when we add things to both sides, subtract things from both sides, that's the additive property of equality. When we multiply or divide both sides by some constant, the multiplicative property of equality. Okay? So let's do some more elaborate justification. All right, I'm going to clear the text out, so pause the video now if you need to. All right, let's do it. Next page. Uh -oh. There's our next page. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. So now we have a much more complex equation. Let's actually take a look at it for a second before we start to get into the justification. Now remember, today is not about solving these equations. You did that in Math 8, right? You did that in 8th grade Common Core. You have, we've reviewed it in this course. So what we're doing today is justifying each step. All right. So let's take a look. Step one, what happened? We took this equation and we rewrote it as 3x plus 6 minus 2x minus 14 equals 4x plus 7. Pause for a moment and pause the video if you need to, to think about what, what thing that we've learned already justifies that step. All right. Hopefully you realized that it was the distributive property. So the distributive property, okay? It's not the distributive property of equality. This actually has nothing to do with equality. The plain fact is, if we're multiplying x by 2, x plus 2 by 3, we can distribute that multiplication, and likewise we can distribute the multiplication by negative 2. Now let's take a look at our next step. In the next step, it looks like we took this 6 minus 2x, and rearranged it into negative 2x plus 6. Again, think about what property allows us to just flip-flop that. Hopefully you got it. That's going to be the commutative property. And specifically, it's the commutative property of addition. All right, the commutative property of addition allows us to flip that 6 minus 2x and make it into a negative 2x plus 6. Oh boy, this next one's kind of weird. This next, next one, we took the 3x plus negative 2x and we pulled that x out. Right? What, what is that? That's kind of a weird one. Right? You might not think that even needs justification. But what allows us to do that? Again, it's the distributive property. Many of you would just think, how oh, all we're doing there is combining like terms. But the reason that we can combine like terms is because of the distributive property. No matter how poor my handwriting is, that's why we can do that. All right? Now we're finally down to this step. Look at where we are. x minus 8 equals 4x plus 7. Let's see what happens next. In the next line, it appears that what we're doing is that we're subtracting 4x and adding 8 to both sides. Subtracting 4x, adding 8. What allows us to just subtract the 4x and add 8 to both sides of the equation? All right, finally we get into sort of the topic of the day. That is the additive property of equality. additive property of equality, right? We added a negative 4x to both sides, and we added an 8 to both sides. Okay, now let's take a look at the next step. Next step, we took this negative 8 minus 4x, and we made it into negative 4x minus 8. All right, likewise, we took this 7 minus 4x and turned it into a negative 4x plus 7. I think we've seen that one before. Think about it for a moment. 
Yep, that is again the commutative property. Okay to abbreviate property as prop of addition. All right, this is starts, starts to seem a little redundant now. Then we took this x minus 4x and we factored an x out. And that is again the distributive property. Again, not of equality, just the distributive property. Technically, by the way, it's the distributive property of multiplication over addition, but uh, who wants to write that? And finally, we're at negative 3x minus 15. We divide both sides by negative 3. We get negative 5. And as weird as this is, that is going to be the multiplicative property of equality. And again, you might say, well, why, why not? Why shouldn't we call it the division property of equality? Or likewise, um, in step, I guess it was four, why not the subtraction property of equality? And again, this just boils down to the fact that if we have something like negative 3x is equal to 15, right? instead of bringing in a whole nother property, what we're really doing is the equivalent of multiplying both sides of the equation by negative one third. So we are still using the multiplicative property of equality. Wow, look at that. But as weird as this may be, as, as crazy as this is, at the end of the day, these are the reasons that you use to justify solving a linear equation. It's one of the standards in the Common Core Algebra curriculum is to be able to justify sol the steps in solving an equation. So we want to get some practice on it in this lesson. All right, there's a lot on the screen. I'm going to clear it out. So pause the video now if you need to. All right, here we go. Okay, let's keep going. Now, one of the things that I like the most in math is when strange things happen. When things happen that make me go, whoa, what, what happened there, right? And we're gonna see that in exercise three. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to look at this equation in letter A, we've got this kind of justification thing going on, and I've even filled in some of the reasons. What I'd like you to do right now is pause the video and try to fill in the other reasons, okay? Take as much time as you need to. Go back and look at the last exercise if you have to. Rewind the tape if you have to, or not the tape, but the, the video. All right, pause the video now and try to work through those three justifications. All right, let's go through them. So, the first one was already done for us. In other words, we distributed a negative 3 and a positive 2 and got these two quantities. In the next step, what we did is we subtracted 8 from both sides. Hopefully, you wrote that that was the additive property of equality. Anytime you add or subtract the same quantity from both sides of an equation, it's the additive property of equality. All right. We then factored an x out of both the 5 and the 3. Okay. Anytime we factor, we're actually bringing in the distributive property. It's tricky because it seems like we're doing the opposite of the distributive property but we're just using it in sort of the reverse order. That's the distributive property. The next thing that we did once we were down at this step is we subtracted a 2x from both sides. That's the additive property of equality again. So we've got that already written in. And then the last thing we did is that we flip-flopped this 11, negative 11 minus 2x and made it into a negative 2x minus 11. All right, and hopefully you said that that was the commutative property and done. All right, but the weird thing about this equation, the thing that makes me go, oh, that's kind of cool, is that we don't get a value of x. 
we don't get a value of x. Take a look at b. The final line of this set of manipulations is a very strange statement. Negative 11 equals 0. Now, I, I think the first question here is pretty easy. Is this a true statement? No. This is false. Right? And the second thing, could any value of x make it a true statement? Is there any value of x that I can put into this equation that will result in negative 11 being equal to 0? No, negative 11 is never equal to 0, no matter what x is. All right, last question, and I want you to think about this a bit. What do you think this tells us about the solutions to this equation? In other words, the values of x that will make it true. What I'd like you to do is pause the video right now. Go back to the basic idea that we saw in the first lesson, which is that solutions to an equation are those values of x, or whatever the variable is, that make the equation true. So think about it. Pause the video and try to answer C. All right, now this is actually quite important. This kind of problem will come up time and time again as you move up in mathematics. But letter C is very simple, right? It basically means there are no solutions to this equation. All right, and that is really, really critical to understand. Um, normally, when we solve a linear equation or other types that you'll see this year, you know, you go through a set of manipulations, and eventually what happens is your final line is x equals blah, x equals 5, x equals 10, x equals negative 2 thirds, things like that. But here our final line is negative 11 equals 0. And because that statement is false, and always false, and it doesn't matter what value of x we put in, it's false, the plain fact is no value of x will make this equation true. And because no value of x will make it, equal, it, will make it true, there are no solutions to this equation. Kind of cool, huh? All right, I'm going to clear this very important exercise out. So pause the video, really think hard about it, write down anything you need to, and then we'll move on to another one that's really rather weird. Okay, here it goes. Let's move on to the next page. All right, same deal, a little bit of a complicated equation. It says consider the equation 7x plus 2x2 2 times x plus 5 equals 9x plus 10. Letter A says show that x equals negative 5 and x equals 2 are both solutions to this equation. Both solutions. Pause the video now. At this point, you should know how to show that a value of x is a solution to an equation. See if you can remember how to do that. All right, let's go through it. I'm going to draw like a little line down so that we, we've got some space for each one of these. And we'll start with x equals negative 5. All right, remember, to show that something is a solution to an equation, what we have to show is that when we substitute it into the both expressions, the expression on the left and the expression on the right, we find that those two expressions are equal and make the equation true. So let's take a look. We're going to get 7 times negative 5 plus 2 times negative 5 plus 5 equals 9 times negative 5 plus 10. That's going to be negative 35 plus 2 times, oh, that's 0, equals negative 45 plus 10. I think I could have used a little bit of extra room on this, but we'll live. We'll get negative 35 plus 0 is equal to negative 35. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to scooch it over here. Negative 35 equals negative 35. That's true, and therefore, it's a solution. Remember, that's what a solution is, a value of x that makes the equation true once we substitute it into the left expression and the right expression. Let's do 2. Whoops, x equals 2. Let's put it right there. All right, so we get 7 times 2 plus 2 times 2 plus 5 is equal to 9 times 2 plus 10. So we'll get 14 plus 2 times 7 
equals 18 plus 10. We'll get 14 plus 14 equals 18 plus 10. Again, not so great on the room management, but we'll get 28 equals 28. So that's also true. Hmm. Well, all right. So what does this really tell us? It tells us that the, this equation has, at the very least, two solutions. Now, letter B says solve this equation by manipulating each side of the equation as we did above. In other words, just, just like we've, we've been doing, let, let's solve the equation. What does the final strange result tell you? So here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to pause the equation, and then oh, sorry. <laughs> I'd like you to pause the video, try to solve the equation. I'm not sure how you pause equations. But I'd like you to pause the video, solve the equation, and something strange is going to happen. Okay, and then if you can figure out what that strange result tells you, try to write something down. All right, let's go through it. Okay, well, I suppose probably the first thing I would do on this equation is I would distribute that 2. That's going to give me 2x plus 10 on the left-hand side. Not much I'm going to do the right-hand side. I'm going to get 9x plus 10. I think I'm going to combine like terms now, and I'll get 9x plus 10 is equal to 9x plus 10. Hmm. I don't know. If I'm just kind of rotely going along, I would probably subtract 9x from both sides right now, and I'd get 10 equals 10. Now, a lot of students will look at that and they'll say, okay, x is equal to 10. That, that is certainly not the deal. In fact, this result is kind of the opposite of the one we had last time. That is a true equation. Okay, it's always true. Let me put that down. Always true. Right? Always true. 10 is always equal to 10. So what does this result tell us? It tells us that every value of x solves this equation. All real numbers Every real number will be a solution to that equation. So, let's take a look at C. Test your conclusion by picking a random integer, or really any number, and showing that it's a solution to the equation. So what I would like you to do, and then we'll do maybe just one example, but I'd like you to pick one example, just one, and show that this equation is true. Don't pick negative 5 or 2, we already did those two, but grab one for yourself. Pause the video now. All right. Now, of course, the one that I'm going to randomly pick probably isn't going to be the one that you're going to randomly pick, but I think I'm going to go with x equals, let's see, we did 2, we did negative 5, let's go with, um, let's go with 7, x equals 7. Let's see if 7 is a solution. All right, so again, as always, a solution is any value of x that makes the equation true. So let's substitute it in. 7 times 7 is 49. Of course, 7, times, 7 plus 5 is 12. 9 times 7 is 63. Hopefully you're doing this without a calculator to strengthen your arithmetic skills. 49 plus 24. 63 plus 10. 49 plus 24 is 73. 63 plus 10 is 73. And that's true. And therefore, 7 is a solution. Any number we picked, we would get a true statement at the end, which is really rather cool. All right? So when you solve equations, really one of three things can happen. Either you do manipulations, and at the end of all your manipulations, you get something like, you get something like, you know, x equals 3. And if that's the case, then there's your solution, right? Or you get something like negative 10 equals 4 in which case you say there are no solutions. Or you get something like 8 equals 8, in which case every number is a solution. Sometimes we'll even say that it has an infinite number of solutions. Okay? That's it. So I'm going to clear out this text. All right? But really pause the video now and think hard about this problem. Very important one as well. All right, here we go.
Okay, let's finish up. So today, what we saw is we saw the additive property of equality and the multiplicative property of equality, and how we can combine these two properties of equality, along with the commutative, associative, and distributive properties, to justify the steps in solving an equation. How we can start from the idea of a true statement, manipulate, 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 until we get the value of x, and we can justify each step. We also saw how doing this equation-solving process can give us strange results, Things like eliminating the x's and just ending up with something like negative 10 equals 2, in which case, no solutions. Or we get something like 10 equals 10, in which case we say, eh, every number is a solution. There's an infinite number of solutions. So this is pretty heavy stuff, and it's going to take a little bit, but it's good, because if you go on to take Common Core Geometry, where you do a lot of proof, and proof is all about explaining your thinking and explaining your steps, then this will help. All right. Well, I want to thank you for joining me for another Common Core Algebra 1 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler. And until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.